If you're anything like me, you host a TV show alongside an eight-foot-tall pink hat-wearing loser. Sorry, I'll start that again. If you're anything like me, you're still struggling over whether all of this year's Oscars should have gone to There Will Be Blood or No Country for Old Men. Either way, No Country picked most of them up, and the Coen brothers have gone straight into Burn After Reading, starring George Clooney, Brad Pitt, and Tilda Swinton. Meanwhile, on the other side of the quality spectrum, the Hollywood machine churned out Max Payne, a violent adaptation of a violent video game. Both open today, but which should you see? Our opinions may surprise you. No, they won't, but watch anyway. There's two films. There are two films. There's two films. Go. Burn After Reading. Burn After Reading. Um, what do you think? The, Coen new Coen Brothers? the new Coen Brothers film. The, the phrase I've got for this film is, it's not worth the sum of its parts. It's got an amazing cast. It's got Clooney, it's got Brad Pitt, Francis McDormand, Tilda Swinton, John Malkovich. John Malkovich is really quite good at it. And uh, Coen Brothers doing like a spy, espionage caper kind of a film. Yep. And it's really ordinary, I think. I think it's just ordinary. Well, I thought, I thought you were going to like it a lot, and I was going to explain why I didn't like it a lot, but yeah. I think I liked it more than you did. I was expecting something a lot lighter, a lot more fun. Yeah. Yeah, like, as you say, espionage, comedy, Coen Brothers, like that cast, it all seems great. Yeah. Um, it's their darkest film. I know it doesn't seem like it, but it's... Although the characters are so dark, what, how they feel about their characters and where they're going and what they want out of life mm. is just so depressing. Yeah, I don't necessarily agree with that word though. I think it's just, yeah, it's not as life, not as full of life. Doesn't, mm. yeah, it doesn't have an energy to it that a, a Coen Brothers film normally would. Um, so yeah, no, I wouldn't recommend it. I would, uh, I'd go and push. But then again, I like stuff like Hudsucker and Raising yeah. Arizona. And, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, and Raising Arizona is one of the greatest comedies of all time. But. You know. I, I mean, you know, everyone knows their worst films are pretty much Lady Killers and Tolerable Cruelty, and mm. I still think there's stuff to like in those yeah, films. Yeah, I agree too, yeah. And this is better than those, so... Moving on. Um, moving on to Max Payne. Yes, Max Payne. This is a video game adaptation, yep. I'm led to believe, of a very popular video game, I'm led to believe. Have you played this game? No. I feel so ashamed for everybody who was involved with this. Um, this is this is really bad. I'm not even sure if it's a movie. Um, if it's if it were, if I saw it in a museum, I could kind of think that okay, maybe it's like an experimental work of art or something, and I could kind of give it some credit. I think the only person who can hold their head up high is the gaffer, because there's some very well lit stuff. There's kind of very fun shards of light, and it all look, looks very cool and all the rest of it. God damn, this is really horrible. I don't want to talk about it. That's the it's, right answer. I don't want to spend more time thinking about it. It's eight, The film's 85 minutes, and I seriously yeah. thought it was two and a half hours. I was yeah. like, no. I uh, know. Halfway through, I checked my watch, and I was like, you're kidding. Is it going to be like this? It's it is... so bad. Why? Why Why? Why would they do that? Why, why would they make a film? Uh, why? Just why? Did you know Chris O'Donnell was still alive? Well, uh, I'll tell you what, they've warmed him up. He doesn't look too good in this. No. Um, and he's, uh, he's, oh, man. Yeah, just let's move on. Let's talk about something else because this is really horrible. Don't, um, don't go and see it. No, really, avoid. really, really avoid. Yeah. Now. All right, show and found. You got lots of top from last week. I think I can. Well, the idea behind show and found is to highlight things that people should go and seek out that they can seek out and that would be good. You tend to find things that people can never find and if they could find, they shouldn't watch. Um, I always like to take the other the other route. I like to find good films. I'm going against that. I'm betraying myself a little uh, this uh, week. I'm going down your side. Right. Yes. yes, I am. Welcome. Um, earlier this episode, uh, we alluded, it could be said, to uh, Stanley Kubrick's Lolita, oh. which was a very, very good film. It was a bad obsession. It used uh, a man's relation, a middle-aged man's relationship to a young teen, preteen girl. Um, as a metaphor for obsession. Uh, somebody was making a very ill-advised yet oddly similar film in England. Around the original Kubrick time? Around then. It's a few Ooh. years off. Oh, okay. I'm I'd like to present to you Twinkie. Ooh. Starring Charles Bronson. Okay. Charles this Bronson is, new to me. Is, a Thank you. is a 40 year old uh, writer living in London who's having a relationship with a 16 year old schoolgirl. Um, it is a comedy. Serious? It is. It is a an intentional comedy. Com an intentional comedy. It's played for laughs. Um, 
it is unwatchable. I couldn't believe that the ABC played it, and I couldn't believe what I was watching. Now, I can't believe the director's name on this. The, surely, surely this isn't the correct director. Richard Donner? Yes, Richard Donner directed it. The Richard Donner. And, uh, yeah, it's, it's shocking. You, you will not believe what you're watching. You know how some films from the 60s and 70s start at a specific point and then just go off in a random direction? They just oh, go yes. off the rails. There is no plan whatsoever. This is the quintessential example of that. Wow. There is no plan to this film. It just goes off wherever it likes. And it is a shocker. But Twinkie. it's so unknown. And everybody who talks to Richard Donner should bring up this film. They should. They really should. I want, I want him to sign it. That's my dream. So there you go. Twinkie. Twinkie. That's a big Twinkie. And that's it for this week. Almost. Yes, we have a weekly competition to announce. Now, before we saw Max Payne, a few of us were debating whether there had ever been a good movie made from a video game. Nobody could think of a single one. So your challenge is to let us know what you deem the best video game movie to be. The funniest, cleverest, and most impassioned answer will win its creator a big prize pack, courtesy of our sponsors. All the details can be found on our website, bazooraproject.com, where you can also find extended segments from this and earlier episodes. And don't forget to join us next week when we examine movie credits. We speak to Mad Max cinematographer David Egby. And we revisit Brideshead in Saw 5. I mean, Brideshead revisited. <laughs> I know I'll be watching. No, you won't. No, I won't. Until next week. Sign off, catchphrase. <laughs>